Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how to turn an RX 480 such as this one, an Asus Strix, it can be any other card, I just have these on hand, uh, into an RX 580. The only differences between the RX 480 and the RX 580 is that there is a faster core on the RX 580 thanks to AMD being able to refine the manufacturing process and therefore they can overclock further. So you can basically turn it into an RX 580 by doing nothing more than flashing the BIOS and that'll be it. But on top of that, I also have a part of this video where I'll show you how to change the RAM timings on the card itself, which should give you better performance. I'm not going to spoil it for you. You'll have to watch or skip through, whichever you prefer. And without any further time wasting, let's roll the old intro and show you how to make an RX 4580. Yeah. Okay, so welcome back. The first thing you want to do is download a program called ATI Flash, which as you can see I've already opened up my Google Chrome and searched for ATI Flash. Uh, the very first link which you can take according to the search engine now is actually Tech Power Ups and that is the latest version, version 2.74, which you probably want to get, otherwise you might not be able to flash successfully. Um, depending on when you watch this in the future or not, you know, if there's a later version, go for it. I can't guarantee it'll work, but it probably will. Um, so all you got to do is just download that, use your preferred uh, connection wherever you're based. Uh, it's only a 1.2 meg file, so it's not exactly going to take a long time. And... Um, all right, once you've done that, uh, onwards and forwards. So, you want to extract it. Just right-click and extract. If you're on Windows 10, there's a good chance you probably are. And uh, it won't take long at all. It's only a couple meg, as I said. And there's ATI Flash. So, what you want to do is right-click and run as admin because Windows 10 and all of its infinite wisdom seem, seems to think that the files are missing because you know it's got privileges and access rights and whatever so whatever just right click if you don't it'll just tell you you got to right click and uh, run as admin so there you have it all right so as you can see rx580 and an ati polaris 10 which is another rx580 but because i'm running crossfire it doesn't pick it up as far as i'm aware so first things first click save which will bring up a new window this will basically mean that you're saving your stock BIOS, so call it an aptly named thing, like stock. All right. um, it'll take a couple seconds to download, it's not quick getting your BIOS off your graphics card, but it, you know it's not going to take the rest of the day either. So once it's saved, you're done with this part of the program for now, and as you can see it's saved stock. So if anything goes wrong, you can go back to this file. I would personally recommend um, making a safe area where you can uh, you know get it back from like maybe a USB stick or something like that it it, it just for um, you know just in case that's all it is basically all right so once you've done that what you want to do is select all of it and cut them and go into your C drive which as you'll see I've already got an ATI file but um, I won't delete it because it's got the files in there already all you want to do is right click new folder and make it called ATI or something else if you want, but that's probably easier. Um, as you can see, I've already got the files in here. So with that in mind, I also have the BIOS file for the RX 580 stored in here as well. So there's nothing more you need to do with it. It does say that it's a 256 KB file, which I will warn you now, a stock one is 512 and there's a good chance that it might throw up an error. Um, I will upload the 512 KB file as well as the 256 KB file because I've had some strange issues flashing these cards where 256 KB file works and a 512 doesn't even though a 512 KB file is stock. It's kind of bizarre. I don't really understand why it does it, but I'll give you both. I highly, highly recommend you use the 512 KB file first to see if it works. Um, other than that, Let's move on to the next step. Right, so open up command prompt, simply click on the start button, type in CMD, right click, run as admin, make sure you run it as admin. 
and then you'll be presented with your lovely command prompt. What would we do if we didn't have a GUI these days, huh? Okay, so <laughs> so uh, you want to type in cd, change directory, c colon backslash ati, which will point you to this folder right here, which I just told you to create. And then what you want to do is address the file, uh, sorry, the program with ati win flash, which will be right there. It doesn't matter about caps or not, doesn't care for that. And then what you want to do is you want to add a couple of flags, uh, dash f and dash p. I honestly don't know what fla um, flag dash p does. Uh, I just know to use it. Uh, I know that flash, uh, that the F, thank you Facebook Messenger for interrupting me so ever so well. Um, dash F is to force the flash. So if you get a message saying, you know, can't flash because of different SSIDs or something like that, it's because you've forgotten the dash F to force it. To force it? To force it. So that will basically ignore the fact that you've got a 480 and trying to make it a 580. So. That's why you put the, f the force flag in there. And then next, after that, you want to put in the graphics card number, which is zero for primary. Then you've got the secondary, which will be one, and third will be two, and like, onwards and onwards. You can, you know, whichever it is, that's the number you put in. So put in zero, because you want. To, I'm going to flash the primary one first, and then you want to call the name of the... Um, the ROM that you want to flash, which is 580.rom in that folder as well. Make sure it is in that ATI folder, otherwise it won't read it. And simply hit the old enter button and it'll begin to flash. Now, usually if you're going to have an error, like it says uh, error not, ROM not erased or something along those lines, it will have happened by now. Um, if that does happen, try to use the 512 KB file again, but then if it keeps happening, use the 256 KB file and see if it'll go through because that's an error that I ran into in the past and that's the way that I managed to get around it. So, it, it, you know, it says it may take more than a minute but realistically it probably takes 30 seconds. So we'll just wait for the confirmation to pop up to say, you know, it's flashed and here it is. So the old, this, it will look slightly different for you guys because um, your old SSID, basically the, you know, the card itself will be an RX 480, whereas mine's already the RX 580. So it will look slightly different. Don't worry about that. Obviously, the old BIOS version will be different too. Um, it does say that all 80,000 bytes were programmed and both verified. So that's good so far. Um, <laughs> you don't actually know if it's worked or not until you reboot the system, because that's how BIOS flashing works. So if I just run you back through flashing a secondary card again, if you press the up button while you're in the command prompt, it brings back the previous line and you can go back and change it. So if you put in one, it will then proceed to flash graphics card one. Now I'm not going to do it again because I'm not going to show you the flashing process because it's the same thing. Um, but you can keep doing that or you can change two, three, four or even five, you know, it depends how many cards are in your system. So um, that's that. Next is a reboot. And to find out if it works, so that you can see for yourself that it runs, uh, we're currently running at the stop frequency of the RX 580, 1360 on the, on the core and 2000 on the memory. And as you can see, there's no graphical corruption. It looks as beautiful as it always did. And actually, because I went ahead and performed the tweak that I talked about at the start, it's running a little bit quicker than it should. So I'm going to show you some performance slides of changing from the RX 480 to the RX 580 BIOS on its own and then we're going to cut into how to change the memory timings and I'll show you the performance increase to be had from that. So let's show you the slides and let's see what actually happened when you changed to an RX 580. Alright guys, here we are. I'm just going to show you quickly how to download the Polaris BIOS editor which uh, from this GitHub page. I will uh, leave a link down in the description below so you don't have to bother typing it out. 
Uh, all you need to do is click on clone or download and simply download as zip. Now I've already done this, but you know, might as well, it's only a tiny file and it'll bring you this. What you're gonna do is extract it, either, you know, drag and drop to your desktop, it'll extract it like that or via the conventional method. And um, if you open it up, here we have a couple of files. And all you need to do is open up the BIOS editor. It'll warn you, of course, that it can be dangerous and irreversible damage, blah, 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 blah. Uh, you know, ignore that. And from there on, simply open up a BIOS file. Now, I already have my mod performed here, so I'm not going to open that one, but I'll open up a stock RX 580, which, as I was saying before, it warns you that it's less than the standard 512 KB. Now, don't worry about it necessarily. You can do it with a 512 KB file or a 256 KB file. It's it's not picky. Um, you can, as you can see here with the power play, I've just noticed this myself actually, is change the maximum frequencies that you can obtain within, you know, overclocking software such as MSI Afterburner or wherever you may wish to play. Because right now, 1770 and 2250 are the max I can get on this one because I haven't changed them. And I'm not going to bother changing it because there's not really much need. I'm never going to hit those frequencies with what we're about to do. So the important part is, ignoring that, is this part here, the memory uh, megahertz. So as you can see, it's in a bunch of uh, hex numbers and decimals and all that sort of whatever you want to call it. And what you want to do is you can try with this number here, which is the 1500 megahertz strap, which will, as far as I can remember, give you CAS 13 uh, across the board. Well, it doesn't really work so well for me, so I decided not to use it, and I've gone ahead and used the 1625 strap, which is this one here, as you can see. So what you want to do is right click or just Ctrl C, however you prefer, it doesn't really matter, and copy that string. Make sure you select all and delete, first of all, in the 2000 megahertz strap, and then just paste it in there, and it should be exactly the same. Don't, make sure it is actually, you know, not going to have part of that string left in the middle, otherwise you will screw it up. So with that done, simply save. I'm not going to do it again because I've already done it. So save it as whatever you want. I just called it mod.rom because that's easy to type into the ATI wind flash like I showed you before in the previous section. And what that will do is it will give you CAS 13. Uh, sorry, for the uh, CAS 13 if you've chosen the 1500 strap or CAS 14 if you've chosen the 1625 strap. Uh, I would highly recommend the 1625 strap just because it does actually work uh, and it's more consistent. But feel free to experiment. Don't go crazy and try and copy something like the 1000 strap, which is something like CAS, CAS 9 or CAS 10. Um, it's not going to work and <laughs> you'll have some mighty fine time trying to recover your BIOS. So do, this is obviously done with caution. Don't, you know, don't be silly about it or anything because it does... Uh, it does play quite a big role in the actual functionality of your graphics card. So just proceed with caution, understand that this, obviously this can go wrong, and let's show you a performance slide of what the differences are. All right, guys, well, there you have it. That's the end of it, I suppose. You've just seen the difference from changing your memory strap into something slightly faster. Uh, as you can gauge from the performance, there's roughly a 9.6, 9.7% increase just in heaven alone. Uh, it does vary depending on application and whether it's a synthetic benchmark or if it's a game. So take away that it's roughly between an 8 and 12% increase depending on application and how it uses your uh, VRAM. So overall I would say flashing your RX 480 into an RX 580, yes there is some kind of benefit but that only that only benefit comes from basically the increased clock speed which you can do you know by yourself by overclocking your RX 480. The real improvement however comes from tweaking your RAM so that it runs at a higher uh, higher throughput and therefore you know more data through faster processing the gpu can request data faster blah, you, you, you get the gist uh it works faster so you get better fps and that is the only real change that i would suggest doing unless you're adamant you want an rx 580 rather than an rx 480 even though it's the same card um 
I wouldn't really recommend that you have to flash it to an RX 580, but you might as well if you're flashing the memory timings, because at the end of the day, it carries the same amount of risk. So, you know, you can be one of those. I've got the latest graphics card sort of people if you care about that. But um, overall, yeah, it was a success. I believe it should work on other cards as well, although I have not tested it yet because I am unable to get BIOSes for it. Um, if you like this video, please smash that thumbs up button, really like it, really appreciate it. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you break your graphics card, <laughs> definitely leave a comment down below. I will try to help you fix that, um, possibly upload another video if need be. There are tutorials online already, but you know, I might as well if, if you guys need it. So with that in mind, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.